All right, so we often talk about stuff you should do before launching a game. What what is the stuff you have to do when you launch the game? Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel. Welcome to another video. Let's talk about it. Last week I released my new game, Heroes of Loot, Gauntlet of Power. Check last week's video for those that haven't checked it yet. More importantly, check out the game on Steam. And don't forget to leave a review. And that's all I'm going to say about that this time. But what do you do when you launch a game? I see a lot of developers mess up in certain areas, especially when it comes to communication with players. Let's talk about a few things after the intro. Oh, but before we do that, um, in two weeks time, I want to do a Q&A. So if you have any questions, anything goes about everything, anything, anything about everything, everything about anything, drop the question below in the comments. Um, I'll remind you a little bit at the end of the video, but uh, Q&A in two weeks, <sighs> ask me questions that are interesting or funny or whatever, or have never been asked before. Don't ask stuff about the universe because that stuff. All right, intro. Okay, so it's bloody hot in my office. Sorry, that was a weird accent, but that's the heat. Um, so, uh, and again, I push this video to the last moment. It has to go live this afternoon. So let's speed it up a little bit. There's not a huge amount of things you have to do after launch, but there are a couple of things you really should look into and take care of. The first thing is be on top of everything, like literally everything. Um, Discord, email, Twitter, um, discussion boards on, well, in this case, Steam, if you're launching on another platform, the comment sections and the review sections, those type of things, be on top of everything, don't miss anything. Uh, pretty much when you launch a game, it's not done, it's not over, you're not, you're not finished, the next phase starts. And that means there's gonna be some taking care of things. People will run into bugs and issues and um, things that aren't clear or um, people will start mentioning things that they don't like. And this is the key thing. Don't dismiss it, uh, but also don't act on everything that people say. Just take a little bit of an average. If a lot of people are mentioning it or multiple people are vocal about something, you probably want to look into it and see if you can fix it, change it, improve it. Um, if various people are mentioning a weird bug, then it's actually a bug that happens pretty often. You have to fix it. If only one person mentions it, put it on the rare bug list and don't, I mean, if you know what it is or what could happen and how to fix it, do that. But you don't have to jump on everything. You have to really sort it for yourself. What's the important stuff? What is everybody mentioning? And what's the less important stuff? Because then we can delay that a little bit further down the road in a new update. I've also seen developers go into discussions and other um, well, actually some developers do name calling and things like that. Of course, that's bad practice and that is a certain level of professionality. You're not releasing just this one game. You're probably going to release more games. So try to be a certain way and don't look at it as well. You bought my game. I don't have to. I can ignore you from now on. No, because you want those customers to return for your next game. If there's a very negative comment or negative thing, um, let it rest a little bit. Don't go into your keyboard, type everything out. Let it rest, think it over, mull it over, look if there's actually some point to what they're saying and if you can maybe improve on that and then come back with a much calmer you and give a normal reply. And I've seen so many developers don't do that and it's very hard because you get a lot of weird stuff thrown at you in comments and reviews. And actually it didn't have a lot of negative stuff on this game, which is a good thing. Um, the first couple of um, negative reviews, but on Steam you can only give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So negative or positive is just very close together. But the first uh, two or three were actually Chinese reviews. Uh, they didn't like the game and they thought it was too expensive. Uh, both of those, or all three of them mentioned the price. So I had to actually search if maybe I made an error. Maybe I priced it too high in China. Wasn't sure what the price point was, but luckily uh, you can find those things online. Um, the Steam default setting was pretty much in line with what indie games at this price should cost in China. So I quickly pushed that comment to the side. I figured there's always people that don't like a price tag on anything. So I um, didn't really change the price because I, I figured those are two, three negative reviews and I saw that there were a lot more Chinese buyers. So I ignored that one, but still because it got mentioned a couple of times, I did look into it. Also found out that it's very common for games that release a Chinese version and completely localized version to get such reviews. Apparently a lot of Chinese players 
like to jump on it and tell you that it's overpriced and no fun. So I figured just two or three negative ones, or I think two negative Chinese and one positive Chinese review at the early stage, I figured that wasn't a real problem. Okay, enough talk about China. Um, I only ran into, I think one big bug, big bug, big bug, one big bug in the game, which I never encountered. And it's a fun one, so let me actually explain what happened. Um, people were starting to lose their weapons. In the game, you can mount eight weapons in eight different directions. But at some point in the game, later in the game, people started losing their weapon. It's just weird, never happened to me. And I played a lot of hours. I had a lot of people play test it. Uh, they never reported it. Now it is possible it happened, but they didn't notice it. That's actually true for my own game as well, that I just didn't notice it. But um, what happened is that these weapons, at some point during development, I gave them a usage number, a max amount of usage. Uh, now, normal weapons don't have this number, um, but it was added for defense weapons, stuff like that, that got removed since. But that usage number uh, for weapons was set to infinite. If you're not a game developer, let me explain it. Infinite is not a actual number that a computer language knows. Infinite was a keyword that I assigned a number to, and that number was 9,999. By now, you probably guessed that at some point, if you didn't change your weapon or level up your weapon, but just kept using it, you would actually be shooting 9,999 arrows. And then one more, and then your weapon was gone because the system figured there was no more usage left. Now, of course, I should have just added a very simple check. If it's infinite, don't do anything. If it's not infinite, then we can do it. Now this bug kept happening to various people, um, also had various people complain, but they actually ran into a union weapon, which actually is a reason to empty a slot that combines two weapons into one and then one remains empty. That was not a bug, but they also piled onto it or mailed me about it. So now I actually had to figure out who was running into the actual bug and who was actually not completely understanding the game eventually figured it out and last Friday, so a couple of days after the full game, I released a big update. And that actually moves me to the second point, try to have a bunch of content ready to go as a first update. Of course, you don't have to do that, but I think it actually expands the interest in your game for early buyers. They will suddenly see a update that fixes a bunch of things that they mentioned, but also new content they can play with, uh, all those little things, all those little extras that hopefully will keep them more and longer interested in your game and maybe tell their friends to also buy this game before the launch discount is gone or whatever. So uh, try to make sure you have content prepared or at least know a way how to quickly add new stuff to the game. Now, one other thing, when you're releasing a game, there's a lot of email coming your way, mostly people that want something from you. And a lot of those people are scammers or just have a business offer uh, like localization. I got a bunch of emails from companies and actually some of them mailed me a couple of times telling me they could do localization to my game. It's already available in many languages. So it's pretty much automated stuff and junk mail or spam mail, but it comes your way. Now, the other thing, if you're not aware of this, you're going to get a lot of email from so-called um, influencers or YouTubers or curators. Uh, those are two things. Let's first talk about the YouTubers. Most of them are fake make sure to check their email address and look it up on YouTube. Uh, it's always like a little difference, like the I or the L or the one is added to the email address or something that really looks like it, but it's not. It's just all fake accounts, uh, especially the bigger the YouTube channel is, the less chance they are actually mailing you for a key. And they often ask for one or more keys because my friends and I would love to play it on the stream, stuff like that. Ignore all those mails. Uh, problem is, of course, every now and then there might be a real one. So you do have to check everything. And that's just a lot of extra work you don't want. But yeah, you got to do it. Or you might lose out on that rare case that uh, somebody who's really interesting to send the key to contacts and reach out to you. So uh, check them all. It's uh, I think I have 50 of these mails in my email inbox. The only positive I can say for that is that Apparently my game got found and showed up in a lot of uh, people's uh, lists. So that's a good thing. It just that it was a lot of extra work for me. Now those are the streamers. The next thing is a lot of Steam curators. I actually mailed certain curators before the release of the game. One of those bit me in the ass because he left a negative review on my game. Uh, that review also shows that he didn't really understand the game. 
but yeah i'm not going into that but um, those things happen but once you launch your game a lot of curators actually um, start mailing you requesting again one or more keys and usually it's more than one key they want for whatever reason uh, curators on steam i figured i'd try it again but it's still it doesn't really I don't see the point of it. I don't think it adds anything to the whole Steam ecosphere or or how your game is being promoted at all. Um, yeah, I didn't waste my time on it. And all these curators, if you enjoy a lot of games, start buying those games and not ask for free keys. Give it a little playtime and move on to the next game. That's not, that's not gaming. That's just collecting. So um, curator mails, uh, luckily that only happens on Steam if you're releasing on mobile or whatever. You don't get those type of mails, but you get a lot of press requests. You get a lot of people wanting free promo codes, gift codes. It's a lot of vetting. It's a lot of checking out if they are who they are and if it makes sense to give them a key if they are who they are. It's a lot of work. So a lot of stuff comes at you and in the meantime, you also try to make sure players are happy with the game and you try to fix stuff and you try to push updates and you try not to mess up new things in those updates. It's a lot of chaos coming at you in a week or maybe two weeks after the launch. So if you think launching a game is all that you need to do, think again. There's a lot more coming at you after that. And I'm not done yet. Right now I'm testing the Switch version of Gauntlet of Power. Luckily for me, I don't have to do all that work. I buddied and teamed up with Sirius Lion on my Discord, who's taking all my game code and making it run on the Switch and eventually Atari VCS and maybe a few other consoles at some point in the future when we both have the time and energy for that. But for now, the Switch version is up and running. I played a first couple of rounds in it and it's actually very far already. There's mostly interface issues. I hope we can fix those because it's a lot of uh, font and resolution size type things and I hate to have to dive into all of that and make it bigger or roomier or spacier or whatever. So I really hope we can manage to make that all up and running uh, pretty quickly because then we can release the Switch version later this year. And that's not all. I still plan on various updates to the game. I want to reach out to YouTube streamers, influencers still. Um, a lot of the big ones I contacted early haven't really touched the game yet so far. So I'm just gonna try and poke at it again when I have a new update as well and more content, more stuff. And I can now show them there's a positive rating on Steam that it might actually be interesting to, for them to look into this game. So uh, let's hope all those things happen and pan out and work out. But the key thing you have to remember, this is the final thing of the video. The key thing, take a break. Literally, when you release the game, completed the game, launched the game, all that, make sure to take a break. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Next week, I'll be on vacation. Actually, in a couple of days from now, I'll pack my bags and uh, me and the missus will be heading out for a week um, somewhere in the woods, in the forest, hopefully a little colder than it is now because it's extremely hot right now in the Netherlands, but temperatures are dropping to normal, normal, I guess, I hope. So um, that will be a nice week to just relax and then hopefully i'll have all the energy again to dive back into regulator city which i've been working on for the last couple of weeks already again um then my next game also has to be done this year um, and updates for gauntlet of power and all of that so make sure you have a couple of weeks after launch to fix things and update things but then also make sure you take a break and that also means that next week i'm skipping a video sorry guys i have nothing prepared i have no uh, no topics. I could do a studio tour, but you pretty much see everything that is in the studio already. Office, studio, whatever. Um, so next week, probably no video. The week after that, let's do a Q&A. So that means you got two weeks to drop all your questions below. Um, anything goes about everything and anything. Maybe not, but I'll filter it out a little bit. Uh, if you have any questions about whatever, drop them below and I'll see if they are interesting or funny enough to answer in the video in two weeks. So that's it for this week's video. Uh, like, subscribe, comment below, hop on the Discord, come say hi, check out Gaunt of Power and leave a review. All right, thanks for watching, bye.